Now let's go ahead and create our first API. And let's head to the API management that we have created. Then let's browse to APIs. And as you can see here, we have an Echo API has been created for me. And it has a bunch of different HTTP operations, get, post, delete, etc. Let's go ahead and create our own API. And let's say we are trying to create an API gateway or API management for LinkedIn, where we want to allow our users to go ahead and create profile or update or delete, and also want to allow them to save a job or apply for a certain job. So let's go ahead and do this. When I create a new API, I can choose from all of those Azure components to be the backend service for my API. And for this course, we are going to stick with the Azure function app. As you can see here, I need to choose a function app to link it to my API, and I don't have any yet. So let's go ahead and create a new function app. Now let's go ahead and create our Azure function app. And let's assign it to dev resource group. And let's put LinkedIn profile as the name of our function app. Let's publish it as a code using .NET Core runtime stack version 3.1. And let's host it in Australia East. Now let's go to the next page, hosting. It's going to create a new storage account for me because I don't have any storage account in my subscription yet. And let's select the Windows operating system and consumption plan. Now let's go to the next page, monitoring. Now I get to choose either to create a new application inside instance for this function app, or I could choose the previous application inside instance that I've created while I was provisioning the API management. And let's do this. Let's go to the next page, tags. I'm not going to specify any tags. Then let's go ahead and create our function app. Now let's go to our function app and create our first function. Let's go to functions and add a new function. And let's select HTTP trigger. And then let's put profile in the function name. And let's make the authorization level anonymous. However, you should never do this in production. Now let's create our function. Now the function has been created for me and let's get inside. Now let's go to the code and test. And to keep it simple, let's get rid of all of this code and just return a message that says your LinkedIn profile has been created. Now let's save our changes and let's test it. Great, 200 response code, my function is working well. Now let's head back to my API management. Now let's go ahead and select the function app. From here, we will select LinkedIn profile function app and then we are going to select profile function. And let's keep everything as a default. And let's go ahead and create this API. Now the LinkedIn profile API has been created with two operations, get and post. If we look at the get operation, we will see that it's linked to the Azure function app that we've just created, LinkedIn profile. Now, let's go ahead and see how we are going to test this function or this API. We have tested the function app already before and we made sure it's working perfectly. Now, we want to test it through the API gateway or API management. And in order to do so, let's go to the test tab. 
and then let's send the request. As you can see, we have got 200 response code that says our API is working well as expected. Now I'm going to show you another way to test your API. So let's go to the developer portal. And let's go ahead and publish your developer portal. Then let's head to developer portal legacy. Then let's browse to APIs, LinkedIn profile. Then let's go to get profile operation. Then let's go ahead and try this API and send a request. And as you can see here, we have got 401 access denied error. And the error message says that the request is missing the subscription key. It's interesting that we didn't get the same error message when we tested this API from the API management. So let's go back to the API management to try to understand why this happened. So let's go to APIs, go to LinkedIn profile API, get profile, and then let's go to the test tab. And as you can see here in the HTTP request that's been sent from the API management, it's already including a subscription key. This is why when we send the request, it passes successfully and returns the 200 response code. So from where this subscription key come from? So let's go to the subscriptions to understand this more. And as you can see here, there are different subscription keys already created in the API management. And one of them is assigned for all built-in access subscriptions. And if we show this key, you will see that this is the exact key that's been sent from the test tab in the API management. That's why when we test and send a request from the API management, it returns a 200 response code. Now, let's go back to the APIs, link it in profile, get profile again, test tab, and as you can see here, this is the subscription key that's been used in all built-in API management operations. However, when we send the request from the developer portal, it doesn't include the subscription key. This is why we have received 401 access denied error. And to fix this, we can add a header that includes the subscription key. and adding the header name as well. And then let's try to send the request one more time. And here we go, we have got 200 response code. Now, I'm going to show you a different way to get it work without specifying a subscription key. So let's remove the subscription key we just added and let's send another request Again, we are getting 401 access denied error. Now let's head back to the API management. And let's go to the settings of our LinkedIn profile API. Scrolling down, you will see a checkbox next to subscription required. And this is why the API requires a subscription key to be passed on in the HTTP request in order to work well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this checkbox and let's save our changes. So let's go and test it in the test tab and select get operation and send a request. Again, it returns a 200 response code. Now let's go to the developer portal and send a request as well. And as you can see, it sends 200 response code even though we haven't specified a subscription key. That's because we have disabled the subscription key to be passed in the HTTP request for this API. However, you should never do this in production. Now let's go ahead and check the subscription required checkbox back again. 
and let's save our changes. Now I want you to notice that we have two HTTP operations for this API. We have get and post. Now let's go back to our Azure function to understand why this happened. And if we look at the test tab in here, we can see that we have two HTTP methods we can use to test our Azure function app. We could use get or post HTTP verbs. And what we want to do is to restrict this function app to be able to take only one HTTP verb. Given that we are going to use this function to create a new LinkedIn profile, for example, then we need to restrict this function to accept only a put HTTP verb. So to do so, let's go to the integration here. And let's click on HTTP request and select put verb instead of get and post. Now let's go ahead and save our changes. Now going back to the code and test section, and let's go to the test our function, we can see here that we have only put verb is available for us to use. And if we run it, it will return 200 response code. Now, what we need to do is to change our function name instead of profile to make it like create profile or something. But unfortunately, there is no feature to rename a function app from the Azure portal. And to be able to do so, we need to go to the console. And what we need to type in here is rin for rename, and then type in the current function name, and then type in the new function name that we want to have. Let's call it create profile. Now let's go ahead and refresh this page. And let's go back to our functions. You will see here that our function name has been changed to get profile. Now, let's go back to our API management and see how we are going to reflect these changes. And as you can see here, we still got two HTTP verbs, get and post. So let's go ahead and test one of them. And as you can see here, we have got 404 error. This is because our function app is not supporting these two HTTP verbs anymore. It supports only put verb. Now let's go ahead and update this API by importing a new function app. And let's select our function app, link it in profile, and then let's select create profile function. Then let's import this function app. And as you can see here, we have got a put operation has been created with a create profile. And if we go ahead and test it, it's going to return 200 response code. And if we test post or get one more time, we are going to get 404 because these verbs are not supported anymore in the function app. So we can go ahead and delete these two operations from our API. That's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and please feel free to join me in the next lecture.